In society, we've become very polarized. You're on this tribe or you're on that tribe. You're left or you're right. You're vegan or you're carnivore. But what about the middle ground? That middle ground is just about being open-minded, about not being entrenched in your own opinion, about having the objectivity to assess people's opinion, what they're saying, apply it to the situation, and then to formulate your own opinion. And then to allow that to be flipped on its head, because I didn't think of that. Or, I see your point. I think the world that we live in is moving further away from what I think as normal or what I think as healthy or centered because we are influenced by a constant media cycle that permeates every aspect of our lives every minute of the day through our phones, tablets, devices. And public opinion seems very hard on hunting to feel. I want to help lead the charge on telling the story, to explain to them the dichotomy that exists between loving animals and nature and also wanting to kill one of those animals. And that's quite a juxtaposition. You are tapping into those like thousands of years of DNA that's passed down to you as a human. And perhaps that's the mainspring or the source of why we as humans chase difficult tasks, why we run ultra marathons in the mountains, why we want to swim from one country to another, why we want to constantly push our personal best physical performance. And maybe that all started from the hunt. My seven-year-old daughter turned to me a number of months ago and I haven't introduced her to actual hunting yet because she understands how the meat processing works and I make her part of that. I show her the photographs, I tell her the stories and we go out onto that landscape without the rifle or gun and we look at deer and we observe it and we enjoy it. And she says to me, Dada, you love deer, don't you? And I go, Jessica, I am fascinated with them. And I am fascinated with them. And that fascination comes from hunting. And those wild animals are inseparable from those wild places. And the pursuit of mountains fascinates me. What's over the next peak? What's over the next ridgeline? Now, I am under no illusion that the entire population of the world is going to go out and go hunting in the morning, because they're not. But it's important that it is accessible. If I'm excluded from an elitist community of male, egotistical, bloodthirsty dudes, then that's not for me. But it's not about that. And that's not the community. And it doesn't matter if you're from the city or if you're from the sticks we all came from the one pot we all came from the same place and sharing that is it's wholesome and it's normal and it's good I had this question that needed to be answered and that was joining the army and the pinnacle of that 21-year career was Special Forces. And the Army Ranger Wing is the special operations capability of Ireland. And when I did my Special Forces selection, I did it as a captain. So I was a leader. And in that situation, you're expected to lead. And you must demonstrate by example. I've been on EU4, NATO, UN missions. And all of those missions, be it in Central Africa or in Kabul, 
have been peace enforcing or train advise assist missions where you are helping others you still need to be able to combat threats you still need to be able to conduct yourself within rules of engagement you still need to be able to operate at the highest level and to deal with any threats that present themselves but you also need to walk that fine line you need to be able to diffuse a situation you need to be able to win favor and gather information in a very normal way you need to be able to reassure people that they're safe tonight that the kids growing up that they are able to have a normal feeling of safety a normal feeling of security so that they can be human and so they can enjoy the freedoms that my kids enjoy raising kids in the modern world makes me sometimes feel that we're going the wrong direction we're going too far from our roots and the reason that people who love wild places bring their kids there is because it is so fulfilling it is so you feel your best at the harder and more austere the environment the more beautiful it is those most inspiring images that we look at on our phones are of the wildest most remote places being cold being wet being miserable but navigating yourself towards success that is the most rewarding feeling and why is that it's because it's in you it's it's who you are it's that's the machine that humans are and how we were developed and for me because my caveman software hasn't gone on to the next iteration or hasn't got the next update maybe maybe i'm just like one update behind what i see in general then that is very fulfilling but i think no matter where you are on this technological society ladder whether you're still on an button phone or whether you're planning on getting a chip implanted so you can download stuff from Google without a phone it doesn't matter you can always revert to nature revert to those wild places